Bardasam, may I pose a question? By all means. If God is truly one, as you say, and if he is the creator of man, and if it is his will that you should do that which is commanded, why did he not create man that they should not be able to do wrong, but should constantly be doing what is right? For, in this way, his will would have been accomplished. Tell me, my son Avida, why has it crossed your mind that the God of all is not one, or that he does not will that men should behave themselves justly and uprightly? I, sir, have asked three brethren, people, of my own age, out of my own mind, in order that they may return an answer. However, they have not cared to convince me. They merely say, only believe and you will then be able to know everything. But for my part, I cannot believe until I am convinced. If it is so, therefore, my son, tell us your position. And if we too approve of it, we shall express our agreement with you. And, if we do not approve of it, we shall be under obligation to show you why we do not approve of it. I shall be much gratified to hear and be convinced. This is not a question I gain from someone else, but rather something I have wondered on my own. You have asked me, how is it that God did not make us so that we should not sin and incur condemnation? However, if man had been made so, he would not have belonged to himself, but would have been the instrument of him that moved him. What do you mean by this? He who moves an instrument as he pleases, moves it either for good or for evil. And how, in that case, would a man differ from a harp on which another plays, or from a ship which another guides, where the praise and the blame reside in the hand of the performer or the steersman? And the harp itself knows not what is played on it, nor the ship itself, whether it be well steered and guided or ill, they being only instruments made for the use of him in whom is the requisite skill. But God, in his benignity, chose not so to make man, but by freedom he exalted him above many of his creatures, and even made him equal with the angels. For look at the sun and the moon, and all the other creatures which are greater than we in some points, and see how individual freedom has been denied them, and how they are all fixed in their course by decree, so that they may do that only which is decreed for them, and nothing else. For the sun never says, I will not rise at my appointed time, nor the moon, I will not change, nor wane, nor wax. Nor does any one of the stars say, I will not rise nor set, nor the sea, I will not bear up the ships, nor stay within my boundaries, nor the mountains, we will not continue in the places in which we are set, nor do the winds say, we will not blow. But all these things are servants and are subject to one decree, for they are the instruments of the wisdom of God, which heirs not. Not so, however, is it with man, for... If everything ministered, who would be he that is ministered to? In that case, too, there would not be one thing diverse from another. Yet that which is one, and in which there is no diversity of parts, is a being which up to this time has not been fashioned. After all, one who is not free is not free to love. The world would merely be devoid of true value. But those things which are destined for ministering have been fixed in the power of man, because in the image of Elohim was he made. Therefore have these things, in the benignity of God, been given to him, that they may minister to him for a season. It has also been given to man to be guided by his own will, and his own freedom, so that whatever he is able to do, if he will he may do it, and if he does not will, he may not do it, and that so he may justify himself, or condemn. For had he been made so as not to be able to do evil and therefore incur condemnation, in like manner also the good which he did would not have been his own, and he could not have been justified by it. For if any one should not do of his own will that which is good or that which is evil, his justification and his condemnation would rest simply with that fate to which he is subjected. It will therefore be clear to you that the goodness of God is great towards man, and the freedom has been given to him in a greater measure than to any of those elemental bodies of which we have spoken, in order that by this freedom he may justify himself, and order his conduct in a holy manner, and be co-partner with angels, 
who are likewise possessed of personal freedom. For we are sure that if the angels likewise had not been possessed of personal freedom, they would not have consorted with the daughters of men, and sinned, and fallen from their places. In like manner, too, those other angels, who did the will of their Lord, were, by reason of their self-control, raised to higher rank, and sanctified, and received noble gifts. For every being in existence is in need of the Lord of all. Of his gifts also there is no end. For beings are not deprived of their natural properties when they come to be fashioned, but only of the full exercise of their strength, suffering a decrease of power through their intermingling one with another, and being kept in subjection by the power of their Maker. And in so far as they are in subjection, they will not be judged, but in respect of that only which is under their own control. Nature, and what is out of our control, is amenable to no law. For a man is not judged or found fault with for being tall or short in his stature, or white or black, or because his eyes are large or small, or for any bodily defect whatsoever, but he is found fault with if he steal, or lie, or practice deceit, or poison another, or be abusive, or do any other such like things. This is of his own will, acting upon the gift of freedom, one of the greatest reminders of God's love a love that entrusts us with the same gift of angels, a perfect love in an imperfect world. <laughs>